Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 159 of EcoSY. It's October 2021, and we're excited to have you here. We're going to be starting to do brief intros at the beginning of our shows, but don't worry, we're not bringing any ads. This is still coming to you ad-free. Just want to give you a little taste of what to expect going into this wonderful conversation. So this episode brings us a maven of manufacturing, Miss Megan Zimba, and she's doing a phenomenal things in the industry, and it was just an honor to be able to sit and chat with her. She's a writer by trade. She found her passion to be really helping manufacturers tell their story. So she's helping that next generation connect with industry in ways that just never been done before. And in the midst of COVID, she decided to start her own show called Mavens of Manufacturing. And she opens up on what that experience has been like for her, how it's been such a blessing to her and to others. So you're going to hear her storytelling ability is outstanding. But the impact she's making, that's going to be felt for years. And for those that are interested, I'm actually going to be on Mavens of Manufacturing later in October. So check that out. Be sure to follow Megan. You'll see our conversation coming up. Very excited to work with her. Thank you so much. So remember, keep asking why. Now, cue the music. Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we have a hero episode and I'm very excited to have with us Megan Zemba and she's the hostess of Mavens of Manufacturing. So welcome Megan. How are you doing today? Great, Chris. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Oh, I'm very excited. I mean, I, I heard you on, on Manufacturing Happy Hour. We love Chris Lukey and what he does there. Definitely support that show and, and, and would encourage our listeners to check that out. But your episode really spoke to me. I reached out on a whim and you you responded back, which is really cool. So it's exciting to have you here. So thank you again. Thank you. I I yeah, I actually thought you were Chris um when you first reached out to me because of the same first name. So I was a little bit confused, but then I was like, oh wait, no, different last name. <laughs> yeah, he he's way cooler than me. So, you know, Lukey's got the the roller coaster, the beers, all that stuff. I I'm just just a guy from <laughs> North Carolina, so <laughs> We give Chris a lot of props. You you got the better accent for sure, though. <laughs> I do beat him on the accent. And then I think if we ever got together, I would beat him because our mason jars are a lot more fun than, him, than his craft beers. But I digress. <laughs> <laughs> so, look, we, Megan, get us going. We love to hear from heroes like yourself. And tell us a little bit about your journey to where you're at. So, um, yeah, I've been writing for manufacturing since 2008. That's what I do for my profession. I'm a technical writer by trade. I started out um, at the University of Minnesota, not really knowing what I wanted to do with the rest of my life and actually almost flunked out twice. (laughs) I was on academic probation. And then um, at 19, I found out that I was pregnant with my daughter. So I really needed to figure out the rest of my life because uh, her father unfortunately decided to take a step away from her life. Mm -hmm. So I needed to be both the mom and the dad to her and decided to move back to Wisconsin where my family is from and enrolled at the University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee. uh, So not Madison, Milwaukee, and uh, took a look at what their offerings were for writing opportunities. Mm-hmm. And I could have went the creative route, but I'm, I, I don't have the skill set to write like a Lord of the Rings or uh, Harry Potter type subject matter. So I decided to do their professional and uh, technical writing route and um, graduated with a bachelor's and then returned and graduated with a master's. And then I've been technical writing Since 2008, I started out at a trade publication in Madison, Wisconsin, and that's where I fell in love with manufacturing and engineering. I was able to interview different companies and learn about their products that they were making and some of the concepts. Uh, It was really the time, too, when additive manufacturing was making an appearance on the scene, and we were able to get like the small desktop 3D printers and print out little things like uh, the I know one of my coworkers printed out of a, a Darth Vader pen helmet. So that was really cool. Nice. And then just things that were happening in the wireless industry as well, too. So uh, autonomous cars were starting to be talked about and 5G was coming onto the scene. And it was just 
such an exciting time to see all these new innovations. Um, I did take a break for about a year. I thought I would apply my skill set somewhere else. So I looked into higher education. Mm -hmm. Extremely boring, not my cup of tea. So um, went back into manufacturing and I've uh, been in a couple companies as a marketing person. So I, I did a lot of marketing writing and uh, really diving into what brand storytelling is and helping customers connect with the companies that I worked with and vice versa, and really trying to make a connection between the local communities that the manufacturers were in, because I feel like that connection matters. If you really want to have you know, your products be successful, you really need the community that surrounds you know what you make and do so that they can help support your mission as well. And right now I work for a photochemical etching company called Photofab in Chicago. And it's really interesting because I've never really knew what photochemical etching was until I started working with Photofab. And it's just a different type of metal fabrication process that doesn't involve any cutting tools or additive manufacturing. It just involves chemicals that etch away the material to create these really thin, precise metal parts. It's been a fascinating journey that way. And then um, on the side, I host Maven's Manufacturing, which is really cool because I get to speak to a lot of women who are creating a lot of different standards for manu today's manufacturing. And um, I'm really hoping to help you know, recruit younger generations, specifically women, to manufacturing because I think we need a, a, a little help with uh, more women joining the sector. I, I definitely agree with you there. And what a story, you know, for, for the, your journey. It's so, so fascinating. And I'm, I do want to dig in since you are a podcaster on the, on the Mavens of Manufacturing and let our listeners know about it. And what, what made you start it? You know, and kind of what's your goal there? So, when the pandemic hit, um, I decided to start my freelance company, um, but then Photofab actually hired me on during COVID, which was really interesting because a lot of manufacturers weren't hiring at that time because it was a real struggle for them to adapt to what the environment was with all the remote workers and um, not having the ability to go in the office and, and work. Um, I, I reached out to a friend and uh, we went out for whiskey and tacos and we were talking about fears and he and I both share a fear of heights. And he was like, yeah, that's why I picked up mountain climbing because I really wanted to face my fear of heights. And I was like, that's interesting because I went skydiving to face my fear of heights. And I was like, I, you know, you get up there and you just have to jump. And after that conversation, we started talking about my idea for Mavens and it really started with a conversation that I had with my daughter. She's graduating next year and she's going into the medical industry and she wants to be a trauma nurse. And I'm really proud of her because I do not have the stomach for that kind of stuff. And I have the utmost respect for anyone that does first responders or mm -hmm. um, medical stuff because it can get really graphic and I just, I don't have the stomach for it. And she and her friends, you know, I'm really close with her and it's easy for me to talk to her and her friends. And most of them are going into medical or social work or education. Not many of them were talking about manufacturing or engineering, and I didn't understand why. And some of them are, you know, they believe that there isn't um, opportunities for growth. Some of them, you know, still believe that it's a dirty, dark, dingy, dull, dangerous place to work in. And others just, you know, they're like, I, I suck at math and science, so I, I don't want to join where I'm not going to be successful. And I was like, well, that makes sense. Um, and just me being a part of it personally, you know, I've, I've noticed that there is this gender gap. So not only did I want to help, you know, change those misconceptions that younger generations have, I also wanted to find a way, you know, to apply my brand storytelling talent to recruit younger generations to the sector to help close the skills gap as well as the gender gap. So when I was talking to my friend about it, I, I told him, I was like, yeah, I, this is my idea. This is why I want to do it. 
And he basically just said, well, why don't you do it? And I'm an over planner. I tend to over plan everything and I have to have everything in place before pulling the trigger on anything. And he basically said, that's ridiculous. Just see if there's interest in it. And then if there is, go from there. So I made an announcement back in December that I wanted to do this. And I actually booked out shows until April of this year. So I had to go back to my friend and I was like, okay, this is your fault. You're the one who enticed me to do this. I did it. And now, now I need to have a platform for these guests that booked out until April. So he showed me the basics to like YouTube and StreamYard. And um, I went from there and one of his lines, and he might've got this from somewhere else, but it it's his line for me because he's the one that told, told it to me. But he is like, if you... He's like, your first episode's probably going to be your worst. That's fine. Don't don't worry about it. Just grow 1% from there on. Every day, try to do 1% better than the day before. And if you can keep that growth pattern consistent, he's like, you're doing good. So that's been my goal since starting Mavens of Manufacturing. And there's a couple episodes in the beginning where um, I forgot to push the start button to the live broadcast. So part of the conversations cut off. Um, I left some of the banners up when the outro video was playing. So you can tell where my experience was, but it's been getting better progressively 1% as I've been continuing the show. But that's really how it all started and why I started it. That is so awesome. I mean, we, we, we feel you on the growing pains. I think one of our first shows, we actually didn't even hit record. So we had to do it <laughs> twice. Uh, now, luckily it was with an internal uh, eco colleague. So we went through it and like, oh yeah, we didn't record that. So, <laughs> but the second time around was so much better, you know? It's good practice, <laughs> that's yeah. Right, that's right. <laughs> Well, hats off to you, you know, with your guests being lined up. And I, I know, you know, what you're going through so far is trying to make sure that you bring value to your guests and to your listeners. And, and, and our executive producer, Adam and Andy, who works on our social, you know, there's so many people that are, it's a lot of work to make a podcast, you know, valuable mm-hmm. to people, right? So, you know, keep it up. I mean, for sure. We're very excited for you. Thank you. Now, you, you mentioned, you know, you're trying to help you know, be that advocate for women and, and, and give them guidance. So if somebody is interested in pursuing a career in industry right now, what advice would you offer them? Where would you, where, what would you tell them there? I would say just go for it. Um, mm-hmm. There are so many different aspects of manufacturing. Yes, some of the misconceptions still hold true today. There are machine shops that are dirty and grimy and greasy, but they're they're tooling shops. You can't really expect anything less. I mean, the right. cut metal, you got to make a mess. You have to have the lubrication so parts don't break while you're forming them. Um, but there's also other opportunities outside of the machining or metal fabrication mm-hmm. aspect to it, too. There's a lot of leadership roles that are needed. Um, there's a lot of, uh, roles in the admin office. Um, you know, you need people at all levels to make the wheel turn. And I am not any good at math. I still use my fingers to count. Um, I love science, but I've never been really good with memorizing any of the formulas or, you know, chemical compositions. So I kind of steered away with that. And there's a lot of opportunities to market manufacturers. And I think that's still important right now. Um, Manufacturers need to know how to market themselves. So not only to attract the customers, but also attract potential employees. So Mm -hmm. there's different opportunities that younger generations can look into. And, you know, if kids are interested in medical, like my daughter, I've shared this story plenty of times too, there's additive manufacturing opportunities that you can get involved with where you can print 3D prostheses for amputees, which is really cool in my opinion. And, um, you know, I, I have such a strong connection with veterans because my husband, he um, was actually a combat vet for three years in Afghanistan. And I've met a lot of his friends and um, some of them have been amputees. There's an organization in the Illinois area called Oscar Mike um, that I've attended a couple of events to. And uh, the founder is actually wheelchair bound. Um, Mm -hmm. 
but he he tries to create these opportunities for veterans to have lost their limbs to still be active and you know get a good workout in and these additive manufacturing companies are able to provide them some of these prosthetics that they need to be active at a much cheaper price than it would be without additive manufacturing so i just feel like you know educate yourself know what your passion is and then just go for it. Um, it is kind of grimy and gritty in some aspects. It is still quite male dominated. So there might be instances where you'll you'll get comments or you'll get looks. So you kind of have to have a thick skin. Right. Um, but it is a great sector to be a part of. There's so many different personality types that I think anyone can thrive as long as they can find their niche. And then... A, another great place to start, too, is look at what the organizations are within your community. So I'm Illinois, Wisconsin based. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of groups such as the Women in Manufacturing. That's actually a national organization, but they do have local chapters in different states. Um, there's also the Women in Technology group, the Women in Trades group, which is in um, Seattle, Washington, that I've made a lot of connections with um, the Technology and Manufacturing Association or the TMA, mm -hmm. um, Fabricators and Manufacturing or Manufacturers Association, sorry, FMA. Um, there's also the National Tooling and Machining Association. So there's so many different types of groups, depending right. on what the niche is. You know, look those up, get connected. Definitely make sure that you have a LinkedIn profile because I strongly believe that is the main hub for manufacturers right now. Um, I've met yourself on LinkedIn. I've met Chris on LinkedIn. And then just, you know, don't be shy. Reach out to people. Ask questions. Um, get involved in events. Go to trade shows. Um, IMTS is amazing. There's also Electronico, which is in Munich, Germany, but it, it's still one of the greatest trade shows that I've been to. Even the smaller ones where, you know, there might not be a lot of interesting products per se. Right. Um, there's Photonics West, which deals with photonics and optics. That may seem pretty boring on the outside, but it's actually really interesting because they're doing a lot of things with medical implantables and medical devices. So just you know, go to these trade shows, get out of your comfort zone right. and get get comfortable being uncomfortable. So th that would be my main advice. I love it. And great, great advice. And I love the, the LinkedIn advice. I coach uh, youth on the side myself. And that's one thing I always it's a requirement for me. Get a LinkedIn profile, start networking with the people in the space that you that you're interested in. And, you know, from there, you'll learn. You'll have, have those opportunities to have those conversations, attend some of those events. And for our listeners, all the, the organizations that Megan re referenced, we'll make sure those are in our show notes so that you can jump to them. We're big uh, advocates of women in engineering, too. So that's a great group yep. to, to check out as well. You know, and you mentioned, that, you know, the, the marketing for manufacturers. Cause I'm trying to think through, like, what, what are the, the, the best of the best from a manufacturing standpoint? What are they doing to really market to that next generation? I mean, what, what are you seeing out there? What, what stands out? Is anybody jumping out at like, hey, that's the way you should be promoting this business? Well, I've talked to a couple that are actually experimenting with TikTok, which I think is phenomenal. Uh -huh. that's cool. um, my, my daughter is on TikTok and it's such a fun platform. Like um, there's a lot of comical stuff on there, but there is. Um, a few manufacturers that are using Snapchat or TikTok to create those short videos because attention spans are short now. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows it. And video is what really captures the eye. Mm -hmm. And TikTok is such an easy app. I'm finding it to be easy. I'm still not really good at it, but it has so many different editing options right in the app that you can use. But a lot of manufacturers are using it Um to capture what their machine is doing. And you can tell because the branding of TikTok is still on the bottom of the video, but they're, they're sharing it on LinkedIn. Yeah. So even with manufacturers who might not have the budget to afford a marketing team or to contract marketers out, everybody has a cell phone. And I mentioned this on um, Chris's podcast that I did with Manufacturing Happy Hour. You know, cell phones are so advanced right now 
pick up your phone and just start recording. And then you can download editing apps, whether you're on Android or um, an iPhone. There's so many different types of apps that you can use to edit your photos and videos, and you just have to post them. You really only need 30 to 60 seconds worth. Right. And then you have the other apps to add captions if someone's talking. So so start there. And as I mentioned before, just work to be 1% better than you were the day before and start building up that audience and tag people. Um, you know, there is this debate over whether or not you should ask someone to tag them in. Um, I've done it both ways. I've asked for permission. Um, I haven't asked permission there's very few times that someone has come back to me saying, please take my name off of your post um, because everybody is in this together. We're all trying to get that same message out about manufacturing. So I think some people really appreciate it when you include them in a tag. But if you don't know them very well, yes, definitely ask permission or give them a heads up and say, hey, I'm creating this post. It's about this. I think you're affiliated with this. Can I tag your name and your company in it? Most of the time they say yes. I've rarely run into a, an issue where someone said, no, please take me off that post. Yeah. Um, so just make sure you, you, you know, start with, start small, start with a video if possible. Um, make sure you're on the right social channels so that you can start promoting it. Um, right now, the company that I work for, really hesitant about Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm posting every once in a while on there. We're actually seeing an increase in followers. So just try to share that visual information and, you know, let people into your company culture as well too. show who your employees are, um, show what you're making, show what your shop floor looks like, be fun with it. Um, experiment with different types of tones and personalities and see what hits. Um, especially on the different channels, because, you know, some people like Facebook more than LinkedIn. Um, some still go on Twitter. Some are on Instagram. So just have right. fun with it and try Do trial and error. That's that's what manufacturing is about. It's about problem solving. So that's right. um, just try it out and just keep going with it. That's that would be my main my main advice for manufacturers who are trying to market out. Love it. Love it. Great advice. Fun. Great advice there. I mean, and, and some of the best manufacturers, are, they've got it right. I, I always watch their videos when they come out, thinking about some robotic companies out there right now that are just really nailing it and, yeah. and, and catching the eye of that, of the, of the, the potential, you know, future workforce there. Yeah. Especially right now with the robotics industry. Mm -hmm. Um, I cannot for the life of me remember their name. Um, and I just saw one of their videos. It's something dynamic, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but they have a couple dance videos with their robots. Yeah, Who doesn't cool? like dancing robots? That's right. That's right. <laughs> it's, it's an eye catcher for sure. I, I, am, I am curious, too, uh, on the importance of mentorship. You know, wh from what you've seen, maybe th through some of your, your guests on Mavens, uh, how important is mentorship for that next generation? Where do you see it working? And you know, may maybe where do you see changes could happen that would make it better? Um, I think mentorship is absolutely important, especially with trying to get more women involved in the sector. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it needs to start at a younger age. You know, there's there's talk about how to recruit high school students, but I think it needs to start even younger. Um, but to focus on high school you know, when I was in high school, I had no idea what I wanted to be when I grew up. I, I had a lot of interest. Um, I struggled to know what my passion was. And I think we need to start showing what a career pathway looks like in manufacturing. And, you know, when you're a junior in high school, that's when you're supposed to really start knowing what you want to do for the rest of your life. And sometimes that isn't always the case. Right. So I think building a mentorship program that targets, you know, possibly sophomores and juniors is important. And then just bringing them into the manufacturing facilities, showing them what the process is and actually getting them to do the process and having these hands-on learning experiences is really important. Um, 
but I don't think it stops there. I think once a person gets into a company, they should also have a mentor as an employee because how else are you going to, you know, learn and be passionate about where you work without the mentors? I mean, I, I don't have one mentor. I have probably like three or four that I continually go to for advice. And they're different people that I met at different stages of my life. And I just meet, remained in contact with them and had been fortunate where they haven't like got annoyed with me or given up on me. So I think it's really important to start at a young age. Um, and then as a company, try to have a, a mentor program within your company. So when students are coming in and taking these tours, they can make that connection um, with the employees and with the staff right away. And then hopefully apply for an internship or apprenticeship and then maintain that relationship with whoever their mentor is as they go through that program and then hopefully as an employee. Great stuff. Great stuff. It's so, it's so important. And, and I, I would just, the only thing I would add is to be intentional. You know, mentorship doesn't, you know, you have to actually have, have that as, as something on your calendar to where you're, you're planning to spend time with others to help others. And if you make it a priority, it probably is going to happen, right? You know, so it's, uh, you know, that that's my only other caveat, but I thought it was a, loved your answer there. Loved it. Thank you. So let's, let's, let's talk about Megan outside of work and get to know you a little bit on a personal standpoint. So you, you mentioned your fear of heights and jumping out of airplanes. I'm afraid to ask this question, but I will anyway. So what, what hobbies do you have, Megan? What do you enjoy doing for fun? Um, so, Outside of uh, manufacturing, I'm a diehard CrossFit fan. Um, I actually took a step back from the intensity stuff, though, and started focusing more on weightlifting. Um, okay. I just love getting up. I Some people call me crazy, especially my family members, but I wake up between 3.30 and 4, and I go and work out for an hour and a half, and then I come home and I start my work day. But I really just that's my main hobby I also like you know going to different restaurants that I haven't tried before and trying new foods and I'm actually um a really good cook um my husband says that's why he sticks with me because I cook so good so I love watching food channel shows and just learning about different cooking processes and yeah. um he bought me an air fryer so I've been learning how to use that I actually made sticky ribs in the air fryer one day and they were absolutely delicious. So, nice. uh, yeah, cooking, CrossFit, um, really like wine and whiskey. So anytime I have a chance to go to a tasting for wine and whiskey, I'm there. Comedy clubs, whenever possible. Um, being a mom, I don't know if that's a hobby, but that, I love being a mom. <laughs> I love, I'm with you. I love being a dad. That's the best job on the planet. And, and so I, now if, you're the first guest we've had who I have a very similar uh, sleep schedule, it sounds like. I get up at 4.15, so you beat me by about 30 minutes. But I do an hour and a half of workout every morning myself because, it, to me, it's, it's the way you get the day going. So you're, my family mm -hmm. thinks I'm crazy, too, so you're not alone, Megan. I'm right there with you. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think most people that try to do their own thing in terms of uh, business – I think a lot of them wake up early in the morning because they just yeah. are more productive that way. So I, th I think there's a lot of crazy people out there. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Now, how about your family? You mentioned a little bit about your husband. And so what would you like to share uh, about your family with us? So I'm actually a mom of three. I, uh, I had my daughter at 20 when I was in the start of my third year in college. Um, it really I, I, I let people know she saved my life. I was not in a, a very good place before having her. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm very proud of who she is today. And she's made me a better person for sure, because it was just her and I um, for quite some time. Wasn't really expecting to get married or be in a relationship with anyone until I met my husband at CrossFit. And um, okay. really didn't want to date him. He's a... Uh, he's quite a bit younger than I am. He's um, around eight years younger than I am. So I thought he was older because he had a, a beard. He had a full facial beard to be fair. Um, 
but when I met him, he was actually going on his last deployment. And a friend requested me when he was in Afghanistan on Facebook. And, um, you know, we exchanged likes and comments on different photos and stuff. He came back early because they ended up losing two team members on his last deployment. And I had a boyfriend at the time and he never really asked me if I was in a relationship and I never really felt it necessary to tell him. I don't know if that's a bad thing or not, but um, he asked me out for coffee and it ended up being a four hour conversation. So I was like, if I can have a conversation for four hours with this guy, that must mean something. So I ended up breaking up with my boyfriend and we ended up getting married and having two more kids together. So um, it's the five of us and the my two boys who are three and two, they're fantastic human beings. I call them my wildlings because they are very different from raising um, a girl. Right. They like they like to get into everything. If it's off the ground, they like to jump off things. They like to climb things. Um, they headbutt each other all the time. It's it's just so different. Um, but it's fun. And I think being a, an older mom versus being a younger mom, yeah. um, I'm a little bit more patient with them. And um, I'm enjoying it. I'm not so serious as a parent. Um, my my husband, though, I mean, these are his first two kids that he's had biologically. And um, he's a great dad to my daughter. Um, but yeah, we just, we love, we love life. My husband is a first responder. Um, he just switched back to days. So that's been really fun because um, he's, we see him a lot more and he's not as cranky because uh, he gets better sleep. <laughs> right. um, but yeah, he, I, I love being a mom. It's one of my passions. And everything that I do and the hard work that I put in every day is because of them. I want to give them the best life that they deserve. Well, you, you have a great family. And thank you for sharing. First of all, thank you to your husband for his service. I definitely want to recognize that um, for, for what he did for our country. And, you know, best of luck to you. Your two, what do you call them? Your wildlings? You know, growing, My wildlings. Yeah, raising those two. That's going to be a lot of fun there. <laughs> Good stuff. Well, how about we, we play a game. We call it the lightning round, Megan, and I, it's just random stuff. It lets our listeners okay. get to know you a little bit more. So if you're willing to play, we'll jump into that. Yeah, absolutely. It sounds like fun. All right, cool, cool. So let, I always start off with the softball. So what's your favorite food? Steak. Steak. Nice, nice. Now, you said, you've already said you're a wine and, and a whiskey advocate. So what is your favorite adult beverage from, from maybe from the whiskey standpoint? So I like, it's called Red Breast. It's an Irish whiskey okay. and I like it neat. I don't put any ice in it or soda yep. in it. I just sip it straight. <laughs> Room temperature, straight, neat. Got it. Yep. All right. What, what's on your nightstand? Uh, a bowl of shells that I got from a beach somewhere. And I think there's a book. Okay. <laughs> And a bottle of water. <laughs> there you go. Uh, what's a, an app you can't live without? Uh, it's my CrossFit app. It helps me keep track of what I do every day when I work out. Nice, nice. What's a guilty pleasure? Anything cake. Oh, cake. It, Love it. it. Yeah. Favorite music? That's a tough one. I really like all kinds of music. Um my favorite band is called Modest Mouse. I, get, I think their genre is indie folk band. Okay. But that's a tough one. How about, I like all music. How about movies then? All-time favorite movie? Fight Club. Oh, nobody talks about Fight Club. Got it. <laughs> what's uh, what's uh, somewhere you've never been but hope to go one day? New Zealand. Okay, cool. And what's the coolest place you have been? Um... Well, right now, Munich, because it was actually the first time I was ever out of the United States. And um, my grandfather is, well, was, he passed away when I was younger. Um, he was from Germany. And when I went there, I just kind of felt this weird connection to the place. And I've never been there before. So M Munich, definitely. The beer is great there. I'm not a big beer drinker, but it was fantastic there. Nice, nice. And last one, dogs or cats? Um, 
Um, that's a tough one. I do love dogs. Uh, I do have a cat who's kind of psycho, so I, I feel like I have to say cats. Um, but I do love dogs. <laughs> All right. Well, since you threw in that you love dogs, I'll, I'll let you slide with that. There's really only one right answer, though, you know. So. <laughs> what, what is your answer? It's got to be dogs. I mean, come on now. It's oh, got to okay. be dogs, right? <laughs> so, you know, cats are, My, you know, you have to fight for a cat's love. Dogs just give you the love, you know. Yeah, my my cat is really psycho. She we used to have a Maine Coon cat um, called Sass for Sasquatch because he was a polydactyl. Um, but he died unexpectedly, so my brother gave us one of his farm cats. Right. We call her Jin because um we're Star Wars nerds. Okay. Um, so her name is Jin, and uh, she's she's pretty psycho. She has been bringing home rabbits and chipmunks and birds, <laughs> and I. I just, I don't understand it. And then she'll come up and she'll be the most loving creature ever. And I'm just like, I don't know if I trust you or if I'm right. afraid of you. Like, like I don't you, know. Are you plotting my death? You know? Yeah. She's, <laughs> she's a little, she's a little interesting creature for sure. But um, there are these dogs. There's a, a breed of dog called wolf dogs that have been following on right. TikTok. Okay. They're fascinating. They're so beautiful, but I don't know if I would be able to own one because they're kind of intimidating looking. Well, Megan, this has been wonderful getting to know you. We, we call it Eco Ask Why. We always wrap up with the why, and I'd love to know what this is for you. So if somebody wants to know, Megan, what is your personal why? What would your answer be? Definitely my children. I strive to be the best that I can be because my children deserve it, and um specifically my daughter, because she saved my life. And I always want to show to her that no matter how hard life gets, you can always get through it and you're a strong individual and it's okay if you have bad moments, they're just moments, but your, your superpowers being a girl and you can get through things and do anything that you put your mind to. I love it. I love it. Love that why. For our listeners out there, this has been a delight uh, for us, and I know it has been for you. Check out the show notes. Find ways to connect with with, with Megan. I uh, highly encourage everyone to go subscribe to her podcast, Mavens of Manufacturing. Check that out. You, you'll find a link in the show notes as well. And Megan, this has been a delight. Really enjoy getting to know you and have you on the show and wish you nothing but the best in the future. Thank you so much. I had a lot of fun today. Well, you have a wonderful day. You too. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. This show is supported ad-free by Electrical Equipment Company. Eco is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit ecosy.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y dot com.